Saturday morning and I find myself in Westville, Durban and there's only one place where I will go when I'm in Westville and uh, it's this place, this workshop with this guy, Brent Palmer, how are you? Very good, thank you. How are we doing? Doing fine, thanks. So we came all the way from Bloom today and we thought to come by your shop, see what you're doing in your workshop. Thanks. Um, we've had a <laughs> chat in Vikings Vape in Bloom. Yes, yes. And uh, I, I thought I would come and see what you do, how you do. Cool, it. thanks. I'm so glad you guys are here. Um, yeah, the shop's a bit of a mess at the moment. Sorry, I, I do apologize. And I've always got dirty fingernails because you'll see how the shop goes. Uh, we're busy building a new workshop uh, at the back of the house. Uh, much bigger and uh, we'll be moving from this little space we've got here uh, in the next couple of weeks so yeah um, just a run through of what we're doing um, this is our sanding bench where all the, the tips and the uh, tank sections get sanded so all of these need to be trimmed before they go onto the sanding bench um, so if you imagine that's a v-guard sleeve and all of that needs to be trimmed off and then it goes through the phases of being sanded nicely uh, everything by hand and um, yeah it's a huge mess at the moment but yeah it's fine <laughs> and uh, we've got the the skulls as well so we've got an order on this shelf here with a coffee cup we've got that order of skulls uh, we've got about 65 skulls going out to australia on monday uh, we've just done 30 skulls to the UK and then we've got a batch going out to the US. So yeah, a, a lot of things happening there and a lot of uh, progress, progress happening. So we've got progression. <laughs> very, very cool. So what can you actually show us that will not give away any trade secrets? Well, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> um, so the, uh, it's a difficult process to, to go through. Um, obviously, I've spent the last two years working with different types of resins and uh, different polymers, uh, acrylics and uh, nylons and things like that to come up with the way that we make these things. Uh, I suppose everyone's seen already how the skulls are made in a silicone mold. That's one of the processes that we use and um, it's, yeah, it, it's been a difficult road. Um, it's not easy starting off something like this on your own. Uh, I think that for the first 11 months, I didn't actually get a salary. And uh, so it's not something just to free heartedly jump into. Mm -hmm. I think if we look around the shop, I've probably got over 200,000 rands worth of machinery, which I'm still short on. I still need so much more. Um, a bigger workspace now, that's also costs money, but it's good fun. Um, I, I, I got into vaping um, a few years back and very quickly ended up uh, giving up a career in construction to be working in the vape industry and um, making something unique that I don't think anyone else is making just yet. So hopefully not ever. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, we can take you through a process a little bit. I'll show you a few things what we've got in here. So, like I said, we've been working flat out for the last uh, two weeks now getting this order together for Australia. Um, if you're going to do resin casting or anything like that, I'm going to start featuring videos of how we do it. Um, not necessarily just the vape stuff, but I also do make a lot of other custom uh, items. Uh, I'm making a prosthetic eye for a, for a guy at the moment. So, yeah, I, I get to make a whole bunch of a lot of interesting stuff. I've had a, a company approach me to um, make medallions of their company logo and put them into resin casting. Um, yeah, and then making silicone molds for people, especially in the food industry, people who make cakes and stuff like that for the fondant. I make quite a few of those molds, so that's also fun. Um, just a few of the, the machines that we use here. Obviously, you saw the drill press in the back there. That's every workshop needs to have one. Um, there's a whole, there's another workshop at the back, the lathe workshop. We can't go in there now because we're busy storing all the stuff for the new workshop. But this is this is where I started. This is a speedy vac 20 liter uh, vacuum chamber and what happens is you mix up your silicone or your resin and in a separate bucket you put it inside here and you hit the on switch which sounds something like that and it, it um, extrudes air from this chamber and what happens is then a, a small one millimeter bubble will then become a 10 millimeter bubble and burst obviously decompressing any agent that you've got inside you. 
from there, um, if you're going to be doing a casting in epoxy or resins or like that, you've got to work out which is right for the job. And um, so we go to the second phase. This is where uh, we make molds. So we'll use, uh, I've got leftover silicone that normally gets clipped over there. So I know what day I can open it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I've used about six different types of silicone. Um, the measures are pretty standard for the industry, the way I use it. Uh, my resin's are not standard uh, application. I've changed it and modified it a bit to suit what we make, what we need out of the out of the acrylic resin. So that's a that's a pressure chamber. It works in the reverse way as a vacuum chamber. The pressure chamber will. That's only a 20 liter. I've got a 40 liter in the other workshop. Um, sorry, that's a 10 liter. I've got a 40 in the. Um, so that will push air into the chamber at about four and a half bar. Uh, so any bubble that's left inside your molding or inside your silicone, that's one millimeter big bubble will be compressed down to something microscopic that you can't see. So that's how, that's the, the secret to getting rid of the bubbles. Um, yeah, and then from there, it comes out of there and goes straight onto the workbench where we can sand it down and get the, the rough edges sorted out. Um, from there, it goes upstairs to my wife who does the website and she uploads everything there and gets the promotional stuff done. Everyone who comes here loves that. And that's just a bucket of, I don't know, damaged goods. One day I'll fill it with resin and I'll give it to somebody who does lathe work and they can make a bowl with it or yes. something like that. I'm kind of drawn to this mess right here. Oh, the stick wall. Um, so, this, this workbench here is where we do the, the silicone. Um, it used to be where we did the, the resins. And every time I mix a different color in the resin, so I just, I would stick it to the wall because I've got a thing, I, I, I can't throw stuff away. Um, <laughs> I feel I, that's going to be an art piece one day. I'm going to auction it off. It's um, called hoarding. No, no, no. Like I've got a, I've got a tray of used sandpaper there that I've collected over a year because I want to do something with it again. I want to try repurpose it. I've got a box full of old uh, molds that we're not using anymore, molds that have deteriorated. I can't throw that silicone away. I can't put it back into the world knowing that it's not going to be processed properly. So what I want to do is chop it up into small, small bits and uh, use it as a building media so when I'm doing silicone casting, I'll just take a handful of chopped silicone. Silicone only bonds to silicone. So there's really no use for what I've made there ever again in the world. So it's going to go into pollution. Hmm. So hopefully chop it all up really, really fine. Uh, if I can make a powder out of it, it would be the best. And then use it so that I don't, if I can use 20% of recycled silicone in a mold, I, I think I'm doing good. So yeah, and that's why we've kept all those things and there's a, another bucket full of um, tips and all sorts of things that we will one day repurpose. Um, and probably if I can find somebody on YouTube that's in South Africa that turns uh, woodwork uh, bowls and stuff like that, they can make the bowl and then we can auction it off for charity or something like that. I think that'll be cool. Yeah, my wife is... Uh, <laughs> Hello, she wifey. Is, Hi. She's uh, beckoning me towards this. Yeah, that's uh, that's the dead life. So those are, I think people remember that one. That was one of the first customs I did, um, the Jackson Pollock. And this is just processes. So this is for for those guys that want to do or want customs done. It's very difficult. Um, the metal that you're dealing with in the devices is called a oh, it's a zinc alloy. I don't know the name. So even when I did this one, you can see there's very fine paint chips. I don't know if we can get that. Very fine little paint chips coming off there, which means, and this was properly sanded, primed, prepped, everything to, and the paint still chips off. So after doing a few different mods like that, um, I, tried a, I tried powder coating. So this is an old mannequin that we powder coated and as you can see, the, even the powder coating doesn't want to stick to it. It, it, came out, it came out all right in some places, but for the most part, it's, it's just atrocious. So there's, And it, it stays on strong, but obviously it gives us terrible finish. 
And then the second thing we did was electroplating in copper. So that has a clear coat on it, so it hasn't tarnished any further than it does. But um, the problem with the electroplating is, you can see the gap over there, oh, the light. When you electroplate, it's under heat and the, the metal distorts. So yeah, it changes form and then you, you can't use your item anymore. So yeah, that's the shelf of deadness. There's all dead things up there. <laughs> So those are the new glow in the darks that I've gotten from China Mall. Uh, they don't really glow as much, so don't please don't uh, start calling and asking for these colors. But we're working with new things all the time. So that's one of those uh, experiments that just didn't work out. And we got, oh, I can't, sh can't show people that. That's a secret. <laughs> um, so we got some other things here as well. So a lot of guys, I do the foil tips and with copper, brass, and silver. So now, thanks to China Mall, we can do all of those colors. Look at that. That's fancy, right? So very stoked to have found these in the nail section of China Mall. And some like little beaded things. I, I, I find weird inspiration and weird things. So I'll just, I'll go around and Wherever I am, I'm always looking and seeing how I can adapt something to fit. These are probably the coolest things I think I've found. Is It's like salts or something, little rocks, but jagged and all different colors. So those are, those are spectacular. Um, that one there, that's for another day, that's for another video. And then we play with other things. I think I've, I've done a video on this already, but this is, um, this is your traditional paper honeycomb. Uh, you get the aluminium version as well that you've seen before. Um, I'm also working on a cactus one where it's a dried out cactus husk. Um, we'll see if that comes around. Stain it a color, then put different colors in it. And once it gets machined, it will come out quite cool. And that's kind of what it looks like when we, when we finished. That's just um, scales for knife making. So guys who make knives, uh, they'll, they'll buy two of those. Um, obviously mirrored images and they'll put them either side of their blade and then shape the handle to the way that they want it so that's also been quite a quite a demand thing that's been happening now is guys want scales for their knives and um, other things I don't know what else they use scales for pen blanks <laughs> we're not America we don't make our own pens and sell them for ridiculous money <laughs> yet so that was the chat with uh, Brent. Thank you so much for having us. And, thanks, uh, Lewis. Thanks for good. the coffee. It's a rainy day. Yeah, it's a um, miserable day in Durban. I think we brought the rain or something. It's okay. We need it for the grass to grow. Oh, the grass. Oh, I mentioned <laughs> it. I cut that out. Cut that out. Fuck. Oh, I'm so, hey, if you guys are watching this, stop posting about f the weed being legalized and nonsense like that. It's not legal. You can't buy it and you cannot sell it. You can only smoke it if you grow it yourself. Therefore, if the police come to your house, they can arrest you for smoking weed if you don't have a, a live one in your garden, for instance. I'm just saying, it's a ridiculous thing. Let all the processes go through properly before you start buying huge amounts of fertilizer and trying to cultivate a farm. Also, there's going to be a restriction on how many plants you're allowed to have. So be smart. Don't just go start advertising that you're selling weed and stuff like that because you're going to go to jail. Peace. <laughs>